Hey everyone! Sometimes you'll want to make a scene where a bunch of objects track a single one. So we're going to create a geometry node system that randomly places multiple objects that'll track a single object and is easily adjustable. And without all that manually placing and moving stuff. To set this scene up, we need three things. The object that points itself, the location where the objects point, and the object that contains the geometry nodes. I prefer to work in orthographic view. To start, I'm going to build the pointing object. For this example, I'm going to make an arrow, but feel free to make anything you want. That looks like a decent arrow. The important thing here is that your object origin is located where you want your object to pivot from, and for my geometry node setup, it's important that it points in a negative direction on the x-axis. Now let's create the object that we'll instance our arrows on. I'm going to use a plane, but you can use any shape. It can be a landscape or a cube or whatever. I scale my plane up by a factor of 10 in object mode. It's better to scale in edit mode, I'll show you why soon, and how to fix it. Before we get too far, name the objects so that you can locate them in the geometry nodes. Now let's make the object that we'll be pointing at. Again, you can use anything, you could even have your geometry node system create a random location to point at if you wanted, but I'm just going to use an empty. Turn off the arrow object's visibility, and let's set up the geometry node system. Go into the geometry node editor. With the plane selected, hit new here. This will automatically add a geometry node modifier to your object. Setting this up is pretty simple. First, let's create some random points for our arrows, at a point distribute node here. You can adjust the density field to increase how many points appear. Now we want to instance our arrow object on each of these points, so add a point instance node. In the object field, choose the arrow object. My arrows are huge currently because I scaled my plane in object mode. The instanced arrows are 10 times bigger. If we bring up the side end menu, we can see that the scale of the plane is affecting the instanced objects. But this is an easy fix. With the plane selected in object mode, open the object menu or hit Ctrl A and choose apply scale. This will keep the plane the same size, but set its scale to 1, so now it's as if we scaled our plane in edit mode to begin with. We can hide our arrow object in the outliner again. So now let's get our arrows to point at our empty. To do this, we need to do some math. There's two locations we need to consider, the location of the empty and the location of each instanced arrow. Since locations are vectors, each has an x, y, and z, so let's add an attribute vector math node. Switch the operation to subtract. Put the position attribute in the A field. This attribute stores the X, Y, and Z location of each of our instance objects. We want to get the location of the empty in this B field. An object info node. Put the empty in this field. Switch the B field to vector and connect the location to this input socket. Create a new attribute to store the result in. I use the name angle. Now let's get all of our arrows pointing at our empty. So add an align rotation to vector node. We want to use our angle attribute in the vector field, so switch this to attribute and type your attribute name from here into here. And already our arrows all point at our empty. If you want to adjust the scale of your objects, add an attribute math node here, switch the B field to float, put scale in the A field and the result, and now this float value is your instance object scale. As you increase the scale, if you want less overlapping, drop the density. If you want more control over your instance density, you can switch to Poison Disk, Poisson Disk, or whatever and set the minimum distance between each instance and then adjust the density. There's still one issue we might need to work out depending on your scene. If your instance object isn't at world origin, it'll still act as though it is. Instance locations are local to the object and not the world location. This is an easy fix by adding the object location to the instance position. Create some room, add another object info node, switch this field to the object with the geometry node. Copy this attribute vector math node and drop it here, switch to add. Connect the location of the object to this vector field. Create a new attribute for the world position, I called it position1. Now switch this attribute to the world position attribute. And now it works, no matter where your object is in the world, which is pretty cool. We can adjust all the other settings to change things up. You can do all sorts of cool things with this. For example, have a bunch of arrows follow a dot. <laughs> Ooh, from the future, but also the past. As a quick addendum, geometry nodes are currently being changed potentially massively. So if you're using Blender 3.0 or later, this system is likely to be different. So if any of this really doesn't make any sense, that'd probably be why. Ooh, okay, back to the video. 
Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe and like the video. Leave us a comment if you have any questions or suggestions. We have a Patreon now, if that's something you're interested in. If you'd like to help our channel grow, share the video. Thank you again. Stay safe. I love you all. Goodbye.